everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Brittany and I'm on a mission to hit 3,000 subscribers. So make sure to click that button below. I would appreciate it. So in today's video, we are actually just going to be working on customer orders. I've already done videos like this in the past, but I figured why not film them just in case you guys are new to the channel and have not seen them. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. So from the last time I actually filmed, it was like maybe three days ago. And when I finished that order, I was like, I have nothing on this schedule. So I cleaned everything up at my parents and I'm like, all right, I can breathe, I can relax. Like, good, I have some videos in the queue, getting those edited, things like that, right? And I'm not kidding you, if like the next day I received six orders in total, like from like, mind you, one, two, three, four different people, six orders. So I was like, whew, um, okay. So I know I mentioned before I was trying to do like a Monday schedule with all my embroidery, um, but that's not the case. I was not able to do that because some of the orders that I'm working on are for Easter or Easter gifts, things like that. So instead of coming Monday, it's now Wednesday, it's later in the afternoon. And I'm like, let's just pump out all six orders and then we can deliver them on Thursday. So sometimes we have to adjust with our schedule, right? We have to do that. So this one I have not even ran or worked up like a sample, but basically we have one item which is a comfort color t-shirt. And this is actually coming out really, really blue like on the screen, but it's it's not as blue as you're seeing it, but, it, but that's besides the point. Anywho, so the customer reached out, we're doing girl dad on here. So she is currently pregnant with her first child and she wants an embroidery that says girl dad. So I have to still work on that image. So while <clears throat> I'm working on the one that I'm about to show you below, I'll be working on setting up that image and everything like that. But another Easter gift we have are two towels. Now, of course, by the time you guys see this, Easter is gonna be way past. So just mind you, I'm just working with the order of videos that are going up. So just bear with me. But there are great ideas to promote for next year. Just keep that in mind. So I had a customer go ahead and provide me two identical towels and we're basically embroidering names on those. So of course I've already gone ahead, sent over my fonts for them to select. We've already gone over color options. So she's gonna be doing a gray on this one. I have to thread that up on my machine. And um, with that, of course we have to use the water solvent. So, and I always say that wrong. So if I'm saying it wrong, just bear with me. But you guys know what I'm doing. So let's jump right in to getting started. Now, like I mentioned, customer did state that they want a gray on the towel. Originally, they were kind of thinking like a really pretty, kind of like a green color. Then they were talking about red, things like that, because she was trying to match them with like a swimsuit. And I basically just mentioned her, I'm like, listen, like so cute, would love that. But remember the towel is gonna last longer than the swimsuit because it is for her toddler. So of course, you know, let's let's do something else other than matching a swimsuit so she did end up landing on gray now as you guys can see here this is a light and a dark gray so she did already select the dark gray so that's what we're going to be using for this towel so as you can tell we still need to go ahead thread it up on the machine and then also i need to make sure i'm selecting the size so i still need to size everything with one of my hoops that i will be using so we're going to be doing all that right now. So right now I'm actually trying to figure out what size I want to make the logo or the image. The, the name is basically, I don't know why I call it a logo, but the name that I'm doing. I was originally going to use one of my smaller hoops. However, this is a pretty large towel. I typically do end up using this hoop, which is my eight by 13. These are ones that I recommend, especially for sweaters but this is also a really good one for names. Now, granted, they might have one that might not be as tall. I think they have one that might be like long, but shorter. Of course, I don't have that, so we work with what we have. And I just personally like this size, again, or smaller, 
but longer just because names are typically long, right? So as you guys might be able to know, you kind, you kind of can. We have two different names that we are currently working with. So I'm gonna work with this one first. I believe, actually, you know what I need to check? Where's my phone? I wanna make sure that I am selecting the correct font that the client selected. So let me, hopefully this will pull. I don't know why, but Facebook has been giving me a hard time with like my business account. Um, she said, can we do top ones? Okay, perfect. So we're just gonna go ahead. Come on now. Pick. Well, apparently it doesn't wanna work. Come on. Alright. So if you guys do not remember, I do use Chroma inspired this is actually the platform that does come with your recoma if you do purchase one it actually gives you just the basic chroma software i'm chopping off my head sorry and i personally really like it i it's kind of what i know i guess is the best thing to say and i don't have issues with it if there's anything i need to learn i just google search it so I don't really Google search it, I YouTube search it. Let's be real, where am I really looking for? I want videos, I want short clips, I wanna know exactly how to do it and things like that. So this is definitely a platform that I have learned on my own to use. Um, all right, so I noticed that as I'm making the name bigger, Let's do this one more time. So if you guys will notice, the A has basically disappeared. And this is by me going almost eight inches. However, if I shrink it, well, that's eight, seven and a half. If I shrink it at seven, my A comes back. So just be mindful of that. I do get all my, I guess, fonts from thefont.com. I have a full video on it and I can link it for you guys to check it out. I know a lot of people were kind of saying, oh, I buy all my fonts through Etsy. That's what you wanna do, that's what you wanna do. Again, you just have to be mindful when you are grabbing these fonts online because of course, if you're going to make them bigger, such as example A, it disappears. There are other ones that really don't embroider very clean. So you just have to be mindful with all that information. So again, we're gonna go seven on this one. So it probably won't be as big as I was hoping, but it is absolutely okay. And then we have to save this as a DST. That's what Recoma is. And then let's put it on our hard drive. All right, so here's what I'm going to say. I went ahead and I actually changed it out to my eight by nine hoop instead since we couldn't go as large with the name. But that's fine because again, it just allows us to use a little bit less backing and less water soluble. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make that decision. I'm actually going to be using this tearaway backing. Now I will go ahead and double it up. I actually do pick this up from Joann's so you guys can do the same exact thing. And honestly, I just, I just purchased the full roll. I don't, I'd rather just buy in bulk and go that way rather than buy small and then have to constantly replace it. So all that I do is just cut it, honestly, straight down. And then I'm just gonna fold it over in order to get my double, as you guys just seen that. And now it's just gonna be perfect for me on my hoop. So let's go ahead and set that aside. Now I did have somebody ask truly like how I actually come up with my center. And I know that they don't really care for my method, but again, do what you're most comfortable with. Personally, especially when you're working on a towel, I just lay it down, especially against this table right here, and I use this as my guide. And what I'm gonna do is I just try to keep everything as straight as possible. And clearly we're working with stripes, so we can just kind of you know count out, count in, and then find our center point. And then from here, honestly, I actually just take my hoop Right, so I know that this is my center. I just fold this up. I will place my bracket at the edge so I know that this is a straight line. 
I'm going to be sticking my backing on top and I'm just going to fold her back over. Now I am gonna kind of pull it just ever so slightly because I want a small overhang. And again, I know some people don't like that I do it that way, but that's just how I find my center point. And then if it looks crooked to me, I'll just take it off and keep doing it again. I keep trying to leave some of those clips in just so you guys can see the real reality of you're not always gonna get it on your first, you know, throw down, but with time you will definitely get more comfortable with everything now because we are working with a big towel i did flip the image already on my machine so i do need to make sure that this bracket is going to be facing me so when i put it into the machine so that's pretty good um i'm actually just going to pull it up because i do want to move it over just a hair like a hair all right, perfect. So here is my center. And of course, on your hoops, you guys have like these little dots at the top and the bottom, as well as the sides. And I'm not gonna lie, I really use those as my guides, especially to try to like find this center point when I do embroider. So just be mindful of that as well. I know everyone doesn't have a mighty hoop. Um, if you actually have the hoops that come with your machine, they actually have little divots in the inside as well. And I've used those as my center points. So whatever you guys have used, there is guides that usually you can work with on your physical brackets. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and hoop the product onto the machine. Now, as you guys will see, I have a lot of excess fabric. I typically will just throw it over my arm of my machine. That's another thing that I can do because you don't want it to drag because then it's gonna just pull the front of your hoop down because again, even though it's not heavy, heavy, it still adds weight and it can still like tilt the bracket or the hoop, whatever you wanna call this down and it could distort your image. Another thing that I have done is since I'm in my parents' garage, I'll pull down one of these chairs and I've set the chair just in front of the machine and just draped it over as well. So that's another really good concept. So whatever you guys have, make it work. Like I said, grab your dining room chair, put your dining room chair here. I've done that before. I've taken my computer chair, I've done that before. So there are different things that you can do. I do know that Recoma has this huge board that you can do, but that's typically good for like flat products, which technically in this case, it would have worked here. Um, but that's in storage and I've never actually used it. I do actually follow somebody, but she doesn't post that frequently and she always uses her board. But like she embroidered on a backpack the last time she posted it and she had a really hard time with it because it was in the way and the process to take it probably all undone is just a headache so she just like did with what she had but again it depends on what you're doing right if you're going to always be working on flat products maybe you know doing that big board is going to make sense i kind of do a mixture of everything i'm always doing hats towels bags shirts everything so i don't find it as beneficial for me to again put that board on hopefully i'm making sense all right don't forget your water soluble i'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and place this on top now i will be honest with you guys at the very beginning of my embroidery um i actually had these like little little tiny pins and i would like pin them in all four corners just to kind of keep my fingers away ideally that's what you want to do but over time, I don't use those little pins anymore. I still have them, but I don't use them. I pick, Basically what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and just trace everything out. So I keep talking and I'm not actually, okay. So I do wanna drop the image. It's way too high up on the towel. So let's, let's drop that. Let's trace it again. All right, so I need to center it. Okay, so that's centered. Let's trace it again. Looks really good. I already made sure that my color was selected and everything. Now again, I'm just gonna go ahead. I did have to just move it back a little bit and I can bring it up closer just to watch. And then I'm just gonna kind of hold it. And then it's gonna start embroidering and then I'll just pull my fingers away and we'll be fine. Just taking the soluble, I just pushed it back a little bit because if you well, you were kind of far, but it honestly just trimmed it out down here, which is fine. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. 
And like I said, I'm not keeping my fingers that close, but you know, just let it grab. And then you'll be good. Excuse me folks, but that embroidered really quickly. So here's what you're gonna have, right? That's going to be the name. And all that you're gonna do is honestly just pull this off. Now, if you want to be picky, you are more than welcome to because sometimes it will stay in between like the letters. So if you look here, it's like between the D, the N, the A, the E. I personally, it depends on my mood. Sometimes I'll leave it, sometimes I won't. Like the K, for example, I'll just go ahead and pull that out but I would personally just leave it on there and that's specifically because in order to get it off in between, either you can tweeze it like you see me do or what you can do as well is you can actually hit it with a spray bottle and I do have a spray bottle if you want to hit it with it. It just honestly, it evaporates, it goes away. So there's no need, actually I don't wanna use a lighter because we're working with a towel. I just need to cut off this little, little tiny tail. And that's it. And to be honest, I kind of like giving it to the client with this. I will, of course, tell them, hey, listen, it will come off with water um, just because it looks a lot more cleaner. So here you go with just this name. Now, again, let's go ahead and take that off. And now I'm being left with the backing. So you just literally do what the name is called tear it away so that is what we're going to be left with the back now of course if you want to you can go in there and pull that off but again over time it is just going to kind of come off on its own all right and now connor's is done that's what it looks like so again just pull it and then, like I mentioned, just between the ends, I will go ahead and just peel that off. I have actually seen a couple, well, I've seen, I seen a comment where someone actually said to me, you know, all that I do is I take my backing and I flip it so I can continue to use it. This is the first time that I've actually done that. As you guys can see, I just reused it so I wasn't wasting material and it actually worked. I didn't think it wouldn't, but I just got nervous just because sometimes, of course, I use my smaller hoops so it uses more of the backing. But in this situation, since obviously I did have quite a bit of excess, I was like, oh, let's give it a whirl. And it worked. So really happy about that. I didn't have to waste, you know, more product or anything. So if you have the capability to do it, look into it. But if you're not comfortable with it, then obviously don't do it. So here we are with the backing. Still looks really good. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, fold them up, and then so I can get product shots. While this was embroidering, I actually went ahead and hooped my shirt, created the design, got confirmation, so now we're gonna put that up on the machine and work our final product. So another trick I do wanna make mention that I've learned from the comment section, I had a video posted up. I don't remember which one at this point. But basically, oh yeah, I do. I'll go ahead and link it up here. It was where when I traced everything out, it showed that it was in line, but in reality, it ended up not being in line. So someone actually did post and said that with when they do use their hoop master, they will actually go down a size on their hoop. I probably would only do that with my five by five because my other ones are obviously really big. So for example, on Rakoma, I typically would select my D hoop, but I actually ended up selecting my C hoop. So now I know that I will be within guideline. Somebody else did comment and said that they've actually contacted Rakoma and they set them up to get it all changed to their hoop master. I really need to do that. I just haven't because obviously when Rakoma is open, I'm not near my machine. So maybe once I move into my house, I can try to call them, talk to customer service and get it all set up that way. But that's kind of what my brain is, you know, dealing with. And I'm just going to go ahead and trace it out. I've already selected the color and everything like that. So 
looks good. All right, there we have it. Girl Dad. All right, and there you guys have it. Hopefully you did enjoy this crafting project. If you could, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in our next crafting project. Bye, everyone.